Let's consider the following series problem. There's a series as n goes from 1 to infinity, n factorial over n to the nth power, converge or diverge. We'll have two approaches to the problem. In the first, we use the ratio test. To make that work, we'll need to know a fact about the number e. In our second approach, we use the direct comparison test. To make that work, we'll need to work with inequalities. So in either direction, we're going to have to pull a little bit out of thin air. Now, first, we should just check things out numerically. So let's take some partial sums. Now, for first partial sum, I'm just going to take 1 factorial over 1 to the 1, which gives me 1. For second partial sum, we're going to take that 1, and then I'm going to add the next term, which is 2 factorial over 2 squared, or 1 half. For the third one, we add on 3 factorial divided by 3 to the third power. Okay, recall, n factorial is just n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down to 1. So 3 factorial is going to be equal to 6 over 27. We add, I get 1.72, and that repeats. Now, if I code a little bit, we take the 10th, 20th, and 30th partial sums, and we'll see that these are going to level off at 1.8799 if I round. So it's looking like our series is going to converge. Now, for our first approach, we have the ratio test. So what we'll do is we'll take the n plus first term of the sequence that goes with our series, divide by the nth term, takes the absolute value, take the limit, so it go to some number l. Now, if l is less than 1, our series converges. If l is greater than 1, then it could be infinite, then it'll diverge. And if l is equal to 1, we need to do more work. So, we're just going to set this term up here, follow our nose, and see what comes out. If I take the n plus first term, well, wherever I see an n, I put n plus 1. So we have n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 to the n plus first power. If I'm going to divide by a to the n, the nth term, I'm just going to put our nth term in the bottom. And since it's a fraction, we just flip the denominator up to the numerator. So we're going to have n factorial under n to the nth power. Now, I'm going to rearrange terms a little bit. If I have n plus 1 factorial over n factorial, that's equal to n plus 1. So if you just use the definition, n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1, n, n minus 1, all the way down. n factorial is n, n minus 1, all the way down. So everything cancels but the n plus 1. For this term here, I'm going to take the 1 off the exponent, just split that off as a separate n plus 1. These n plus 1's cancel, and I just have to deal with this term here. So I'm going to put everything under the common exponent n. Now, I'm going to put a minus sign in here just by flipping over what's inside the parentheses. And I can rewrite that as 1 plus 1 over n. Since I have a minus in our exponent, we're going to put this underneath 1. Then we'll note, back when we worked with the exponential, we had as a definition, or as a consequence, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power is equal to e. Okay, recall e is a number, it's roughly 2.7. So, if we take the limit of this term here, that's going to go to 1 over e, which is roughly 0.368. Since that's less than 1, that's our l, we have that our series converges. For another approach, we have a direct comparison test. In this case, our argument is elementary, but we need to use inequalities. So there's a trade-off. Now, direct comparison test, we're going to have two sequences, a sub n and b sub n. a sub n is always between 0 and b sub n, and the series for b sub n converges. The conclusion is the series for a sub n also converges. In our case, a sub n is n factorial over n to the n. b sub n is equal to 2 over n squared. 
So the series for B sub n is a P series with P equals to two, so it converges. Now, let's check the first few n to see if a pattern arises. If we consider n equal to one, two, or three, things aren't so exciting. So for instance, if I have n equal to one, we have one factorial over one to the one. Is that less than two over one squared? One is less than or equal to two, that holds. For n equal to two, we have two factorial over two squared, less than or equal to two over two squared. Two factorial is equal to two, so these are equal. For n equal to three, we have three factorial over three cubed. If we write that out, we note that we get two over three squared, and that's equal to two over three squared. So that's equal also. We see something interesting when we get to n equal to four. So if we write this out, okay, we have four, three, two, one, four, 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 four. You'll note in the last two terms, I can write that as the fraction two over four, one over four. That's gonna give us our two over four squared. For the terms in front, fours go away and I have a three over four, so we have three fourths, two over four squared. Since three fourths is less than one, we're gonna have that this term is less than or equal to two over four squared. So here we're just using, if I take a fraction of the whole, that's less than or equal to the whole. Now, that's gonna be the pattern I use in general. I keep the last two fractions to get two over n squared. Then everything before that is gonna be less than or equal to one. So, how do we work? Just like we did here. I take n factorial, write it out. So we have n, n minus one, n minus two, down to three, two, one. We have n to the nth power. So it's gonna be n of these n's. And these are gonna line up nicely. If we keep the last two fractions, that'll give us our two over n squared. What about everything that comes before it? Well, if you know what's going on here, this term is gonna be a one. This term before it is gonna be one minus one over n. So that's less than one, but bigger than zero. And we can keep going down all the way until I get to our three over n. Three over n, when n is big enough, is gonna be also between zero and one. Now, what we're doing here, we're taking our two over n squared, we're gonna multiply it by a number that's between zero and one. So that number is gonna be between zero and two over n squared. Then we're gonna keep doing that for each of these terms. So what happens is, I can think of this number as just being a number between zero and one. We hit it with two over n squared. So that means our n factorial over n to the n is less than or equal to two over n squared, which is what we're looking for. So that's gonna be our direct comparison test argument.